Howdy folks, it's time for another recipe video brought to you straight out of the Xi'an Famous Foods cookbook. Ashley picked this thing up for me a while ago and I straight up love it. Anytime we're missing China, missing the flavors of our adoptive home, I reach for this thing and I whip something up. So today, I'm gonna make River's all-time favorite Chinese food. It's a Xi'an specialty. I'm talking about rou jia mo. Supposed to look something like this. To start off, we're gonna need some pork. All right, pork shoulder or pork butt. I don't know, what's the difference between a butt and a shoulder? I mean, I know the difference between a butt and a shoulder, but when it comes to meat, sometimes I call it a butt, sometimes I call it a shoulder. I know it has to do with the fat content. But anyway, I'm gonna struggle through chopping this. You want in like four to six inch chunks is kind of what you're going for. Usually I do half of a pork shoulder, but this time I thought I was gonna have more people eating it, so I would just went ahead and did the whole thing and just get in there and chop it. I am not a professional meat carver, okay? But I do know you should get rid of this thing before you start. I don't know why I did it at first. Somehow it snuck in there. That pork diaper got in there. Okay, now about at this point I realized, oh, I have gotten a pork shoulder with the bone in. I did not mean to do that, but it's still fine. You know what? We're just gonna, we're gonna leave that bone in there because we're gonna slow cook this meat and it's gonna be just fine. Put it in a pot. We're gonna cover that pork with some water and put it on the stove, get it boiling, cook it for about five minutes, okay? And what this is gonna do is just get some of that excess fat off. We do want the fat, but I guess not all of it, okay? So just boil this five minutes, that's what you do with the meat. Now we gotta prepare the spice packet, okay? We're gonna start with some star anise, uh, or some bits of star anise, and you can do this in like muslin cloth, or cheesecloth, or whatever, but you can also do it in a coffee filter, which is what we like to do, because I don't keep cheesecloth around. Got an assistant here, do some Sichuan peppercorns. We don't have cardamom pods. You know what, there's white cardamom pods and black cardamom pods, and I got neither pods. I just got some powdered cardamom, but that works fine. A couple of bay leaves, and then also a couple cloves. Probably could have put more cloves in there, we just did three. Uh, a couple of black peppercorns. River counting them out there, very specific, and a cinnamon stick. Take a moment to notice how much that's like a piece of bark. Yes, very interesting. And this is more or less our spice mixture. I don't have everything in here that the recipe calls for, okay? I don't have Chinese licorice. I don't have dried orange peels. There's more you can do to hook this up to get that super authenticness, but this still works. You just bunch that up, borrow a piece of yarn from the other child, and tie this up. Spice pack, done. Okay, we need a few aromatics, so we're gonna coarsely chop a green onion and then get a little bit of ginger. Um, probably could have done more or less. I don't even, you don't even need to do ginger, okay? But I'll just peel it and cut it into some chunks. This is just gonna go in there with our slow cooked meat. Now we got the meat. You can cook it in the same pot, okay? You, but you need, if you're gonna cook it in the pot that you boiled it in first, you need to first dump out the meat, then you need to get the pot totally dry and you need to do it a different way. But since I'm gonna use a slow cooker, this works just fine. Uh, take the meat out of the pot, try to pack it into the slow cooker in one layer if you can. Then to this, we're gonna add our aromatics. We're gonna add some sugar. We're gonna add a little bit of salt. Uh, we're gonna add some soy sauce, a couple tablespoons of soy sauce. Like I said, this is double the meat that I usually do. I probably could have done a little bit more seasonings here. A little black vinegar from Shanxi. Now at this point is when I realized that the Shaoxing wine that I had saved specifically for this video that I was gonna make has been packed in boxes. Okay, so I was exasperated, freaked out for a little while, and then I realized, okay, we can't get Shaoxing wine at the grocery store, but we can get something close enough, and my wonderful wife went off to the store to get the wine. I'm gonna cover the meat in water, put on the lid, Remember to put the spice pack in. Then when your wife gets back from the store, you go ahead and add a bottle of mirin cooking wine, which is not exactly the same, but it's close enough. And you just pretend like that was in there the whole time. Let this slow cook four to six hours, whatever setting you got it on, but you want that meat to be nice and tender. All right, now it's time to make the breads. I've made these before when we did the taijamoa breakfast sandwich, but it's more or less the same thing. I think I'm doubling the recipe here. So that's like four cups of flour. We're gonna do the yeast, the baking powder, Gonna do a little bit of sugar. And then I think it's one cup of water. So four cups of flour to one cup of water. What that's gonna make, if you know breads, is that's gonna make for a very stiff dough, okay? And that is what you want. It's gonna mean a little more work when you're kneading it with your dough hooks here. You could do this with a mixer. My mixer was packed and I kinda like to do it with my hands anyway, but it is a lot of work. It's a very stiff dough. Sometimes add a little bit more water, but you really wanna keep it 
pretty stiff. Okay, so you get into a ball and you just gotta work this thing. At first, it just feels like you're not getting anywhere, okay? But you do everything you can to work this joint into a ball and then you try to knead it and you know what I'm saying, it's hard to knead a dry lump of dough, but you know, you do your best, just put your back into it. It's awesome, after you let it rest for a little while, 30 minutes, an hour, you pull it out, it's not, it hasn't risen very much because we didn't add very much yeast, but it's just a lot more pliable, it's a lot easier to work with. All of a sudden you're like, oh, this, this isn't so bad, and then you knead it for about 30 seconds and then it starts being bad again, and you're like, okay, yeah, it's still a thick lump of dough. I learned this kneading technique where you do one hand and then the other hand, and you're supposed to be like, you know, balanced. It's like wax on, wax off sort of thing here. But when it, when it's really stiff like this, I need two hands to knead it. So I don't know, that, that technique doesn't work very good for me. Anyway, take it through the process again, let it rest again. Okay, this time when you take it out, you're gonna just roll it out and it should be, you know, pliable, but it's, it's still gonna be a stiff dough. We can make eight breads out of this. So chop it up. And what I do then is I take the little bit of bread knead it into a ball, so you're, it's getting its own, each ball gets like its own little knead, right? Make it into a disc, and then you roll it out with a rolling pin. And what you notice is it pops almost right back in. Okay, that's what the quality of this really stiff dough does, is it's not just gonna lay flat, it's gonna pop right back up. Now you don't wanna roll this too thin because you wanna make a sandwich out of this, right? So you want just like this, about this thickness. It is gonna puff up a little bit, but it's not gonna puff up that much when we cook it. So this is more or less what you're going for right here. Do this eight more times and you've got the beginnings of your buns. Now, I like to rest this one more time under some plastic wrap. Now I gotta make a confession. I hate plastic wrap. I'm just not good at working with it. When I was trying to work my way through college, I worked in the cafeteria and they wouldn't let me use the plastic wrap because they knew how terrible I was at it. I would just, this always happens to me. Try to lay this out, forget it, throw that away, let's start over. This one went a little better, but I've already wasted, almost lost that one too. I've already wasted clean fit. Okay, look, this is what I do anyway. Try to wrap it with two sheep. Ugh. Anyway, after that rests, get a pan, totally dry, get it hot on the burner, and this one's big enough you can do probably three in there at once. You wanna cover it because that's gonna like, it's gonna sear it on the one side, but it's also gonna be baking it, and that's what's gonna give it the nice little rise. Uh, about a minute, two minutes, it depends how hot it is. Um, so you gotta watch it according to the temperature. You don't wanna let them burn. But you flip them halfway through, you should get like a nice brown. And that's what you're going for kind of on both sides, this like mottled brown and white look. That's what you're going for. And you, I don't know if you can tell here, but they have puffed up a little bit. This is a great sandwich bread, okay? I could tell they were still a little bit dense, so I decided to let them bake just a few more minutes. Not really minutes, maybe a few more seconds. Okay, keep a real close watch on them. Now. Next thing that I want to make before I put the sandwich together is we want to make some cold noodles. Okay, now I couldn't get my hands on rice noodles, but we're going to make an equivalent here. We're going to make some mahjong cold spaghetti. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to start off with a cucumber. We want to julienne this. I guess if you have the right kind of box grater, you can use that, but I just do it this way. The same way like I do potatoes and stuff. You first do a thin slice and you get some nice little medallions here. You line them up like a deck of cards flatten them out, and then you're gonna go through with the knife and cut it really fine. So this makes the matchsticks, all right? Matchsticks, cucumbers that are really crucial for this dish. This meshes really well with the noodles, so it's, it's nice to have a matchstick cut. You can do the same with some carrots, or you can buy them already in matchsticks. I almost never do this, but since I was making the sandwiches and everything else today too, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy some matchstick carrots. I don't need all those. We'll do about half of those, all right? And the only other fresh thing we need for our noodles is some really finely chopped green onion. We do the whites and we trim it and we do the greens and get it nice and small. And this is gonna be a great flavoring for our noodle dish. Okay, we've got all the veggies there. Now let's cook the noodles. If I could get proper rice noodles in the store, I would. I'm sure I could buy them online, but we're just gonna go with spaghetti. You know, when I've made Italian pasta for my Chinese friends in China, they have very politely told me, oh, you didn't cook these long enough. <laughs> Al dente is not really a, a Chinese thing, and they are almost always eating fresh noodles, so they're naturally softer. But I still like spaghetti, and for these sesame noodles that we're gonna make, uh, spaghetti works fine. Okay, now we need to make some sesame sauce, which no matter what kind of sesame sauce you're making, it's always gonna start with this, sesame paste. We got this from a Chinese supermarket. You can get other kinds of tahini, but uh, this one's usually a little darker um, when you get it from the Chinese market, and I think that works better for this. When you first open it, you have to stir it a lot. 
uh, the oil and the other stuff kind of separates and you want to get a similar consistency throughout the whole jar so you gotta spend a little while stirring it really it's kind of like paint or something like that except you can eat it okay so we get start off with a nice healthy amount of sesame paste get some rice wine vinegar a little bit of oil a couple tablespoons of soy sauce and add some sugar and we're gonna add about half a cup of water. Now, I first thought I was gonna stir this with a spoon, and I said, you know what, if there's any time you should use a whisk, it's now. This isn't a straight up emulsion, but it almost is an emulsion, so let's emulsify this with a whisk. When I first made this, I thought it might be a little too runny. Um, I wanted a little bit thicker sauce, but when you put this in the fridge, because these are cold noodles, so you can put the sauce in the fridge, it actually thickens up, and it tastes pretty good. If we were in China, we might make the sauce differently. We might add just sesame paste, vinegar, soy sauce, dump it straight on the noodles. We're gonna rinse the noodles. We finished cooking them, we're gonna rinse them off. We want these to be cold, but you don't wanna put them in the fridge and let them stick together, right? So running them under some cold water is probably the best way to cool them down. And then I add a couple tablespoons of canola oil, just some more or less flavorless oil, and toss the noodles in that. Obviously the reason we're doing this is we don't want big clumps of noodles in the dish. We want them to be really free from each other. So coat them in oil. Then we're gonna plate it up, okay? So you get a little bit of noodles. You're gonna coat this in some sauce, a couple spoonfuls of this sauce. Sesame sauce is so good, y'all. Y'all gotta get down on this. All right, we add some carrots, we add some cucumbers, we add a little bit of green onion. All right, those are the main veggie components. Then a little more sprinkling of sauce there, a little sprinkling of toasted sesame seeds, and last but not least, homemade chili oil. Y'all saw me make that chili oil before? I still got some left, and I'm gonna add that on here. All right, now these are some legit, almost legit cold noodles. It's cold spaghetti, okay, but it's close enough. All right, now it's time to make the rojamoa. jamoa. We've got the bread nice and toasty out of the toaster oven. I was keeping it warm in there. I slice it kind of carefully. Don't cut off your fingers. Serrated knife works the best. Now, legit rojamoa jamoa would have this flavored pork that's been stewed for a long time nice and soft, and we have the perfect balance of pork, uh, fat, and juice. And most of the people in my family like it pretty lean. When we order it, we say twin shioda, which means, basically just means lean meat. Okay, so I don't really have any fat in here. I just have some pork that's been slow cooked, nice and juicy, delicious. We add that to the bun. And then you wanna to top it with some of the cooking juice. Now, listen, this is hot. Okay, don't burn your fingers. The way I'm doing this here, probably not the best way to do it. Sometimes I burn my hand, but you know, it's worth it because I just made rojamoa. Look at that. Rojamoa, lampi, kind of. Mahjong noodles anyway. This is the combo. This is what you get in Xi'an, all right? My daughter loves a rojamoa. She feels like we are back in China when I make it. These sesame paste noodles, I'm telling you guys, Next level. Then I spend some time chopping some more meat, slicing some more breads, cranking these things out like I work in a Rojamoa restaurant in Xi'an. Oh yeah, adding that juice. I'm telling you guys, this is a legit classic. If you try to make this or some variation on it at home, let me know how it goes.